I goofed on this lecture in class and I realized that I had the wrong equation written down. Um, so for tangent of 2 theta, it should really be b over a minus c. So please edit that in your notes. I'm so sorry for the confusion. Um, all right, so anyway, so lesson 54 is on rotation of conic sections. So it says, let's revisit the ellipse I mentioned at the end of class yesterday. So this 7x squared minus 6 root 3xy plus 13y squared uh, minus 16 ends up being a rotation of a conic section by pi over 6. Okay, so if you just see the pi over 6 line here, um, it was the same as x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 equals 1. All right, so it says um, identify what a, b, and c are for this particular uh, ellipse. So a would be 7, b is going to be negative 6 root 3, and c is going to be 13. So a is the number in front of our x squared, b is the number in front of our xy, which indicates that there's some kind of strange rotation, and uh, c was the number in front of our y squared. So when we put this together, we have tangent of 2 theta equals negative 6 root 3 all over 7 minus 13. All right, so this ends up being negative 6 root 3 over negative 6, which is just root 3. So if you do tangent of 2 theta equals root 3, you can use inverse tangent on your calculator. I would keep it in degrees because you guys tend to like uh, degrees a little bit better. So you're going to do inverse tangent of root 3 and when you do that, you end up getting 60 degrees. Okay, this is what 2 theta is equal to. Now, for 2 theta, we always want 2 theta to be between 0 and, um, not, yeah, 0 and 180 degrees. Because when we divide it, we want our theta to be between 0 and pi over 2. Or you can write 90 degrees there. So when we divide by 2, we get 30 degrees. So this means that we're going to take our standard axis and we're going to rotate it here and here. So we're going to have a 30 degree line and we're going to have the 120 degree line. And then we're going to sketch out the um, new conic section that we get on those two blue lines. So the next step, it says now we use two equations to change x and y into transform values. We can put this into a matrix, matrix but we'll just do it algebraically. Alright, so we're going to have x is equal to x prime times cosine of 30 plus y prime times sine of 30. So cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, so we have root 3 over 2 x prime, and sine of 30 is 1 half, so we have 1 half y prime. So that's our x equals equation, and then our y equals equation is going to be um, x prime times uh, sine of theta, so sine of 30, plus y prime, oh, I did plus above, didn't I? I always do that. I did that in class earlier. So that's a minus there. Sorry about that. All right, so then it's going to be plus y prime times cosine of 30. And I'll give you both of these equations because obviously I make mistakes too, right? So I'm going to have x prime times sine of 30 is going to be 1 half um, x prime and then plus root 3 over 2 uh, y prime. So our next step is a little bit tricky. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in to our old equation, our original equation. So our equation that we started out with was 7x squared minus 6 root 3xy plus 13y squared minus 16 equals 0. And this is going to take a lot of algebra skills. But you guys have been foiling, right, foiling things out since Algebra 1. I think you can handle this. You can do this. I promise. Just be patient and uh, check your steps along the way. So we're replacing all of the x terms with what x was equal to. So our new x is going to be this right here. So everywhere we have an x, we're going to put root 3 over 2 x prime minus 1 half y prime. So we're going to have 7 root 3 over 2 x prime minus 1 half y prime. And we're going to square it. Then we're going to have minus 6 root 3, and we have an x, and then we have our y. So our x is root 3 over 2 x prime minus 1 half y prime. And our y is right here. So 1 half x prime plus 3 over 2, or root 3 over 2 y prime. Alright, then we have 
plus 13, and we're going to do the 1 half x prime plus root 3 over 2 y prime again to replace the y squared minus 16 equals 0. And then it's all about simplification. So basically every single time you do these problems, there's three things that you're going to FOIL, okay? Unless they're missing a y squared term or an x squared term or something. Okay, so we're going to FOIL three parts. So when we FOIL the root 3 over 2 x prime minus 1 half y prime, we multiply it by itself, right, because it was squared. And we have some fractions. We have root 3 over 2 times root 3 over 2. That gives you 3 over 4. x prime is now squared. And then we have the outer is minus uh, 1 half y prime times root 3 over 2 x prime. So I'm going to have minus root 3 over 4 x prime y prime. Then I have also for the inner root 3 over 4 x prime y prime. And then the last is going to be plus 1 fourth y prime squared. Okay, so basically we can combine these two terms. If you have root 3 over 4 plus itself, right, then you would get root 3 over 2 because you get 2 root 3 over 4. So we're going to combine to get negative root 3 over 2 x prime y prime there. All right, we FOIL the next part. So our next part is root 3 over 2 x prime minus 1 half y prime multiplied by 1 half x prime plus root 3 over 2 y prime. And we do the same thing. All right, so when we do that, we get root 3 over 4 x prime squared plus 3 over 4 x prime y prime minus 1 over 4 x prime y prime, and then minus root 3 over 4 y prime. So if I'm going kind of fast, just make sure you're pausing. You're trying to figure out where we get these numbers from. You can ask me in class, too. Those two middle terms are x prime y prime terms combined to be negative 1 half x prime y prime. And then the third part, oh, wait on that part. So the third part here, we're going to do 1 half x prime my, uh, plus root 3 over 2 y prime, and we're squaring it, so we're multiplying it by itself. So when we do that, we get 1 fourth x prime squared plus root 3 over 4 x prime y prime plus root 3 over 4 x prime y prime, and then plus 3 over 4 y prime squared. Okay, so those are our three parts. This is kind of a side note. You're like, wow, big side note, right? And we're going to replace those red underlines with what these three things were equal to. So we're going to have 7 times the first part, 3 over 4 x prime squared minus root 3 over 2 when we combine them, x prime y prime plus 1 fourth y prime squared. All right, and then we have minus 6 root 3, and we're going to multiply, so we're going to have, or we already multiplied those out, we had root 3 over 4 x prime squared plus, no, minus 1 half, right, when we combined them. Oh, no, wait, it's plus 1 half, 3 fourths minus 1 fourth, so plus 1 half x prime y prime, and then minus root 3 over 4 y primed squared. You guys are probably screaming at me like, oh, I can see all these bonus points. I would have got if I was in class. All right. And then I have plus 13. And I'm going to have y squared, or y, uh, y squared, which we already found. It was the 1 fourth x primed squared plus root 3 over 4 x prime y prime plus root 3 over 4 Oh, wait, I didn't combine those, did I? So let's say root 3 over 4 plus root 3 over 4 is root 3 over 2, because it would be 2 root 3 over 4. All right, um, plus 3 over 4 y prime squared. And then we still have the minus 16 equals 0. Okay, so like I said, this is very messy, right? It looks terrible, I understand. Uh, but these are all skills that you've done before. You know how to multiply fractions. You know how to FOIL. You should be able to handle this. So then we, when we continue to simplify, we're going to get 21 over 4 x primed squared. So I'm multiplying this 7 into each piece. I'm going to have minus 7 root 3 over 2 x primed y prime plus 7 over 4 y primed squared minus, I'm multiplying the negative 6 root 3 in, 
So I'm going to have negative 6 root 3 times root 3 over 4 becomes negative 6 times 3, which is 18, divided by 4. So it's negative 9 over 2, x prime squared, minus 3 root 3, x prime y primed, minus, again, it's going to be that 9 over 2, but now it's going to be plus 9 over 2, um, y prime squared. And we have plus 13 over 4, x prime squared, plus 13 root 3 over 2, x primed, y primed, plus 39 over 4, y primed squared, minus 16 equals 0. I'm recording. You can find it. Just put it there. Do you guys have questions or no? Okay. All right, so continue to simplify. And if you do it correctly, the x squared, y squared should go away. Okay, so let's check the x, x primed, y primed, and see if they go away. So we have negative 7 root 3 over 2, and we're adding 13 root 3 over 2. That's going to give us 6 root 3 over 2, which is really 3 root 3. So when we subtract out this other 3 root 3 here, we do end up getting 0. So that's always the first thing you want to check, because if you did that, if you didn't get 0, then we've done something wrong, right? So... Let's look at the xy primes, or not x, yeah, the x primed squareds. Um, so I'm going to have 21 over 4. Let me underline them, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm adding 13 over 4, and then I'm subtracting 9 over 2, which is 18 over 4. So I'm going to get 34 minus 18, 34 minus 18 is 16, so I'm going to get 16 over 4, which is going to make 4. So I end up getting 4x prime squared. Okay, and then if I look at my y primed terms, y prime squared terms, I have, let's see, 9 over 2 plus 7 over 4 plus 39 over 4. So this becomes 18 over 4. So let's see. I get 25 over 4 plus 39 over 4. So I get 64 over 4, which makes 16. So I'm going to have plus 16 y primed squared minus 16 equals 0. So I'm going to add that 16 to the other side. And now hopefully you guys are seeing that this is just an ellipse equation. Ignore the fact that there's primes. Don't let that bother you. If you, you have it just been 4x squared plus 16y squared equals 16, you guys know that you would then divide by 16 everywhere. So your final answer would be x prime squared over 4 plus y prime squared over 1 equals 1. So if you check, that's exactly what we had here. Okay. So what's happening is we're rotating this. We had our 30 degree rotation. So I would draw 30 degrees and I'd write 120 degrees, right? 30 degrees off to, off of 90. And then from there, you're just graphing it just like a normal conic section. So just kind of tilt your head. And you're saying, okay, my a value is 4, or a squared is 4, so a is 2, and I'm going right and left. And my b value is 1, and I'm going up and down. So from the center, which is 0, 0, I'm going to go up, up 1, down 1, right 2, left 2. And I end up getting... A little ellipse like that. Okay, and that's exactly what it is. If you went to Grapher, I'll show you really quickly. If you went into Grapher, which is a, a calculator that's on your computer, um, a graphing calculator, you don't have to do y equals on it, which is nice. So you can do 7x squared minus 6, we put in square roots as sqrt, so square root of 3, x times y, plus 13 y squared minus 16 equals 0. And if you graph it, you have exactly what we just graphed. Now if I hit new equation and I tried to graph the other one, right? The other one was x squared divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 
1 equals 1, it's the same ellipse. It's just been rotated. So this is our standard ellipse on the xy axis, and then we rotate it 30 degrees to get the more complicated equation. If it has an xy term, it's always a rotation of a conic section. So that's kind of a red flag that we should have that. All right, so I think for tomorrow, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you another one, but I'm not going to do this one because it's a little bit complicated again. Um, I think you guys can do the complicated ones. It just takes a little bit. But tomorrow I'm going to do x squared minus root 3 times xy equals 1. And remember, this it needs to be edited. It, it's a minus c there. And I'll give you that equation um, on your test if you have it. But basically on the test, I think what I'm going to have you guys do is find theta. I'm going to have you find what x is going to be replaced with and what y is going to be replaced with. So like x prime times cosine of theta, I get my two plus there, minus y prime times sine of theta, and then y is going to be x prime sine of theta plus y prime cosine of theta. So I think all of you guys can do that. You can find what theta is equal to, you can find what x is, and you can find what y is, and then I'll probably make it a bonus if you can go all the way and solve it out. All right, so hopefully that cleared up some confusion. Sorry again that uh, class was a little